What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Team to Beat Miami Heat basketball channel. My name is Amir. Before I get into today's video, just want to thank everybody for subscribing to the channel. I hit my goal of reaching 200 subs on my way to 300. So if you could subscribe to the channel, would really appreciate it. I have my friend Von Eag, the one and only, joining me again today. What's up, buddy? How are you doing? Good. How are you doing, man? Not too bad. Not too bad. Uh, a little bored. Um, with the lack of Dame news, new news outside of some news on Friday um, and on the weekend. But um, ESPN just keeps pushing out the same garbage. Bleacher Report stating that Miami is the most motivated team still to acquire Dame. And I'm like, obviously, <laughs> like, of course. And Dame still is interested in Miami. It's like, of course, like he hasn't spoken publicly Um changing his status of wanting to go to another team. So, um, you know, just patiently waiting and becoming impatient at the same time. But mm -hmm. what I wanted to talk about in today's video is a couple things with you specifically. So on Friday, there was the Dame memo. So the NBA sent out a memo to all 30 NBA teams. Um, and they stated that the NBA had a talk with Damian Lillard and his agent, um, Aaron Goodwin, um, regarding Dame's request to join the Miami Heat and only the Miami Heat. Uh, did you have a chance to read that that memo on Friday or see the, the articles? Yes, I did. And before uh, I get your thoughts on that and share mine, let me read that real quick. Um, so recent media reports stated that Damian Lillard's agent, Aaron Goodwin, called multiple NBA teams to warn them against trading for Lillard because Lillard's only desired trade destination is Miami. Goodwin also made public comments indicating that Lillard would not fully perform the services called for under his player contract if traded to another team. We interviewed Goodwin and Lillard and also spoke with several NBA teams to whom Goodwin spoke. Goodwin denied stating or indicating to any team that Lillard would refuse to play for them. Goodwin and Lillard affirmed to us that Lillard would fully perform the services called for under his player contract in any trade scenario. The relevant teams provide descriptions of their communications with Goodwin that were mostly though not entirely consistent with Goodwin's statement. So what does that mean to you? What were your thoughts on this? And I know we talked also in a previous episode about player empowerment, and you mentioned how superstars, you know, get what they want typically um, yep. when they request trades and they typically go to where they want. So just in general, what were your thoughts when you saw this on Friday? Um, you know, I think that it's been long overdue that the NBA step up and do something. Um, I think that's why contracts that play, where players have a no trade clause are important, like Bradley Beal, um, where they can dictate a little bit more of where they're going to end up. And it is very, very, very rare that that stipulation is in a contract anymore. Um, Bradley Beal only got that because the Wizards were desperate and are stupid. Um, but I would rather it go that route than the manipulation that we've been seeing over the last, I mean, it's been going, going on for the last decade, like a lot. And then it's even happened before that, but um, players signing contracts and them not honoring it and then wanting to go where they want to go has been going on. Um, Kevin Durant's done it. James Harden's done it. Um, LeBron James in some context has done it. They've, uh, you know, behind the scenes dealings with Rich Paul and, you know, strong arming Anthony Davis to the Lakers. I mean, it's, this isn't the first time my question more so is that, okay, like now we're saying it for the, you know, for the Blazers and kind of a little bit making an example out of them. Um, but the league really, really needs to draw a line in the sand and stick to it. And it can't be just like, hey, for this scenario, this situation, um, because ultimately I do think it's wrong, um, but it's been going on. And I'm, I'm actually really, really surprised with the, the collective bargaining agreement that it wasn't uh, a bigger issue and that uh, the, the agreement went so smooth and that the owners themselves didn't make a bigger stink of this issue um, uh, and push back because like I said, I mean, to sign a, a player to an ex extension and then literally like a couple of months into an extension or a season into their extension, all of a sudden for them to get to pick to where, uh, what team they want to go to is, is it's bad for the NBA. It's bad for the league. Uh, and it's bad for, really for the smaller markets where 
we know for a team that's uh, giving up an all-star caliber player, you're never, ever, ever going to get equal value for that player. It's also bad for the small market team like the Wizards to give a no trade clause because they almost inevitably know that that star player is going to go somewhere else because they're just like a poverty franchise that never succeeds or not since the seventies, right? When they were the bullets. So um, that's also crazy that they would, to your point, give Bradley Beal a a no trade clause. But um, I mean, ultimately if the player's worth it, some, for some reason, I don't know in what context, why you would ever give someone a no trade clause, but like, do you think they're going to move to the direction where it's going to be where they only have to have a no trade clause in order to breach, let's say breach a contract of three plus years left, right? Like it's not as egregious if there's once one season left or two, two years left, but what are your thoughts on that? I honestly don't think the Adam silver and the NBA have a big enough backbone to really push um, against the players dictating where they want to go. I think they did this memo. Um, I think it's kind of an empty threat in some sense. Um, I think they're just so pro player friendly. Um, I think they don't agree with it and they don't like it, but I ultimately don't think that they're going to police it the way that they should because they're making money. Things are still going smooth. It's working. I would be shocked if they did any serious consequences or actually uh, walked the walk the talk and this doesn't really deter people from requesting trades too it's like when this first came out most miami heat fans are like adam silver's trying to ruin this like he joe cronin got to him he's complained to the principal he went to the principal's office and now um they're kind of trying to reprimand i guess miami for being the only team that he's requesting and for uh reprimanding dame and goodwin for saying basically if you trade for him, then because he only wants to go to Miami, that he's not going to show up or you're going to get a disgruntled um, employee or player. So in that sense, it's more of maybe Cronin, it seemed like, was complaining about losing his star, like a small market team, you know, losing a star after signing that long term contract. Um, But the way I read it so much was like, at first I thought, yeah, maybe they're there's something against the Miami Heat. It always seems like the media and the NBA just doesn't respect the Miami Heat or give us the credibility that we deserve. Um, but the way I read this specifically wasn't so much about – and also people thought they, that he was getting in trouble for just saying one team. And to your point, Anthony Davis basically said that. He got fined for only wanting to go to the Lakers. Going back to 2010, Carmelo Anthony basically said he wants to go to the Knicks um, and got there. So other people have done this before. Harden has done this. Harden did this presently. Like, I only want to go to the Clippers. But he's not getting reprimanded. Um, So we were kind of annoyed. Like, why is Dame, who's been loyal, been there for 11 years, the one, and it's also his first time requesting a trade, getting reprimanded? So, but when I look into it, though, and and I read this just a few minutes ago, it says, though, they want to make sure that Dame says that he will – not refuse if he gets traded to another team. I think that's more of the issue is not showing up, right? Because that's even worse. Like if a star gets traded to another team, as long as it's not like messing up the balance of the NBA, right? Like creating like an ultra super team, the NBA still wants to see Dame Lillard play versus him sitting out. He's not Ben Simmons, right? So that's the way I read it more so than saying you can't say one team only as some others interpreted it. Does that make sense to you? Or like, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I I actually, I want to ask you, I want to bring up two things. One, I want to ask you, do you remember what team Steve Francis got drafted to? Was it Orlando? No. I'm pretty sure it was the Vancouver Grizzlies. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. And do you know why he ended up a Houston Rocket? Because... It's basically because a trade and they, he was filler. No, he basically was like refusing to report. Um, I honestly think like the second part of this comment is that um, I think the reason why the league sent out the memo is because you just brought up James Harden, right? I think Damian Lillard and his agent was his Archie Goodwin. Is it Archie Goodwin, right? Aaron Goodwin. Aaron Goodwin. Um, 
I think um, they they're like not being clever or shy about it. They themselves are going out. So our, you know, Goodwin is saying it. He's reaching out to teams. He's making it public directly. Dame is sending out these clever videos and clever tweets and you know the whole you know all this all these Miami references and usually all this stuff plays out by you planting the seed and putting it out to your media and public relations people and so it's indirect indirect right? yeah that's what I was going to so, say so so the memo is like the memo is more so from the league because you guys are just flaunting it and not even being shy about it and putting it in our face and we can't be that we can't like look away from that and so i think it's just like a hey that's why i'm saying i don't think there's any backbone to the nba in terms of like accountability i think it's more so like dude have a little bit more discretion the way you're going about it we get it but you don't need to go and tell every single team um that they can't trade for him and that he's not going to play for him and do all that kind of stuff because like i said all this stuff's been going on the only reason why they're policing it now is because the agent and Dame are doing it themselves instead of using their uh, other channels. It's not because the NBA hates Miami. <laughs> so silly to think, right? I mean, no, no, I, I agree with what you said. Um, what else was I going to say? I lost my train of thought. Um, oh no. Yeah. So the, the other thing, other reporters have said, um, I think it was someone from the athletic that, the NBA could possibly veto a trade if Damian Lillard does ultimately end up on the Miami Heat, and that's my reaction too. Like, could you do you remember the last time? Yes, <laughs> a lot of our friends remember. But what was the last time the NBA vetoed a trade? Do you remember specifically? Because they yes. very well do too. Yeah, Chris Chris Paul to the Lakers. And do you remember why they did that specifically? Well, I think that's when there was the all the ownership issues. So the right. The NBA conflict of interest, right, was actually in. It wasn't just a veto; it was that they were in charge of the they franchise owned the temporarily. The, yeah. the New Orleans Hornets were owned by the NBA. Yep. Yeah. So, I mean, pretty unprecedented. Uh, and again, in this situation, there's no way that you could step in and do something like that um, and set a precedent when, literally, then every single time a trade happens or whatever the scenario is. I mean, in really any trade, somebody is getting the better end of a deal, right? I mean, it's the same thing in a fantasy basketball or a fantasy football league, right? You put it to league votes, you, everybody looks at it and they're like, oh, dude, that team's getting screwed over. Like, what? Well, that shouldn't, like, so you can't get your hands in that. What you need, what the NBA can do is what they did with their memo, right? Is like, you need to honor your contract and your contract is to play basketball, right? And so yep. you can't pick... You can't go to a team and say, I'm not playing basketball here because I don't want to be in the city or I don't want to play for this team or I'm not happy with, uh, you know, the if we're in title contention. Your job is to play basketball. That's what your contract's for. Um, so totally. what's if Miami traded <laughs> Duncan Robinson and Kyle Lowry for Dame straight up? Then could it get vetoed? See, in circumstances no. like but even in circumstances like that, I can understand where someone would think it would, right? Because that's a that seems egregious. But like, hey, even uh, then you don't think so. Uh, L- Amir, let me ask you this trade: What did Paul Gasol, Paul Gasol, get traded for for the Lakers? Uh, I don't remember. Let me think. Let me see if I can remember. That's a good question. I know you'll tell me, obviously. But uh, Mark Gasol was one of them. But the, but but Marc Gasol was like the 52nd or the 53rd pick. It was before he even got playing time, right? Before he was even relevant. He became relevant on the Grizzlies after. Exactly. Nobody knew. I mean, he second round picks like that, everybody thought he's just tr- just a name to throw in the hat. He was not Marc Gasol that we, we found out that what he's capable of becoming. Yeah, that's a good point. And, and who was the only prime, prime, I put, say that with quotes, player that was given up for Pau Gasol? Tony Allen? No, he wasn't done. I don't Kwame. remember. Kwame. I was Kwame. Oh, so, so Kwame Brown yep. and Mark Gasol, the 52nd or 53rd pick in the draft for Pau Gasol. And Pau was Pau. Pau was Memphis Pau. That was just before he was, you know, the second fiddle on the Lakers, obviously. But 
he was like 24 and 12 type so, of power right at that point he was and and really good at defense too so, under so yeah you can tell me the you can make the mark gasol argument that mark gasol ended up being a great player and blah 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 but they didn't do that trade knowing that that he was going to be that dude how um, overweight was he how overweight was he too in his first few years too if you remember mark gasol yeah. was, oh my god so flabby so you want to give me a like conspiracy like rigged level trade where you're like wait the Lakers and Kobe are getting Paul Gasol for uh, Kwame Brown, who was a bust in a random late second round draft pick. I mean, there's been trades in our league where um, we've seen where it's like, what? You're scratching your head. You're like, how the heck does that make sense? And that's just one example, right? Yeah, 100 percent. Even the Bradley Beal ones kind of seem kind of ridiculous, even though he had a no trade clause, like to get not even one single for. I know they got like 18,000 second round picks, and but picks. Like, you're like not even one like i know like can't you give up one pick it's going to be a shitty pick especially if it's within the next two years you still have all those three players for the next two to four years right under contract that they're big three so yeah it's kind of crazy but yeah i don't think it's even a possibility that it would get vetoed i think that's stupid uh ridiculous but going back to the chris paul one which is which is hilarious because you know and i'll keep saying this that the lakers are the team i hate the most across every sport across every franchise. So uh, we were laughing at our friend Panos, who's a diehard Laker fan when that, when he was so excited to get prime Chris Paul, who's 25 years old at the time, I believed to be paired up with Kobe um, in 2000, was it 11, 2011, 12 season. Um, So I was happy that it got rescinded. Um, I think another reason that trade got rescinded too, outside of the ownership piece was that like, I don't think, Chris Paul was put on the market. No one expected him to be traded. And so I think they felt it was unfair that like other people, like he wasn't shopped around. Other people didn't have a choice, right? It was kind of just like, mm-hmm. oh, hey, he's available now. You want him? And like no one else did their due diligence. I think that's kind of shady too, it seemed like. So, um, but I did get the benefit from that because I guess my audience, I haven't ever mentioned though, I used to work for the Los Angeles Clippers front office in 2010, 2012. I was on the sales team. And I worked at Staples Center every day, which was nice, getting to go into the office and seeing that arena and basketball court. Uh, but also it was awesome because uh, after that trade got rescinded, we all obviously know where he ended up. He ended up getting traded to the Los Angeles Lakers, which was awesome. And so – Clippers? Clippers, excuse me. Thank you. Uh, and it was kind of cool because we're working in the front office. Um, and so it was one of the times I had a – a real in if you would say with an nba team because we got the phone call um our boss got the phone call basically saying that hey chris paul is actually getting traded to the clippers just to just to warn you guys that no one else knows about this besides us and the hornets and the nba essentially um so that was kind of cool being in the know and i just remember the uh, our manager basically saying shout out to zach ryan for hiring me giving me a chance to work for the NBA. Um, He basically was like, all right, guys, it's been hard selling the Clippers, right? Because we're selling Blake Griffin. Um, I don't think he even played at that point. I think he, that was right. I don't think he even played a full season. I think he played the preseason, did that dunk, tore something in his knee. So we were like pitching like him, DeAndre, Aaron Gordon, um, come see these guys. It's going to be ridiculous. And then so Eric, Eric Gordon, right? Eric Gordon. Eric Gordon. Jesus Christ. Yeah. I'm sorry. It's not, I'm filming at nine 30. My bedtime is usually at 10. So it's getting <laughs> close to bedtime. Um, running out of gas. But anyway, uh, he mentioned that like, Hey, we're getting Chris Paul. The phones are going to go off the hook. People are going to be calling us right to buy, to buy tickets and sponsorships and all that stuff. So um, once it was announced, just like, I felt like I was in that movie, the boiler room, like literally just like stockbroker, just like picking up the phone, selling some penny stocks you know <laughs> wall street style being super shady so selling out courtside tickets but that was fun that was good times um so anyway um the other piece i guess there's nothing really again new outside of that memo um and the possibility of this trade getting veto which is stupid but um i find it interesting that both shams and Woj just reported i think it was either today or yesterday um Two different reports. One of them I alluded to at the beginning that said that Miami's won the most motivated team, which I was like, that's not new news. Like, why are you guys reporting this? Like, 
obviously Miami's the most motivated. Um, they also said that Miami's the only team that's put an actual official offer out there, which I think we all kind of knew because we haven't seen any articles or um, news clips or blurbs about insert any other team, right, that put in an offer, like Boston before Jalen, you know, contract. There was nothing about Brogdon, two picks, whoever, Derek White. We didn't hear anything about that. So, But it's official, apparently. No other team has made an offer. And I think Miami's getting a lot of slack for what we've been offering because Cronin obviously wants to get the best package possible. He's losing his franchise player. Um, so it's understandable. But people have been talking shit, and Portland specifically said, give us your best offer. We gave an offer, apparently. There's been a framework, Sham said. X amount of first-round picks, three to four, right? A young player, a filler piece like Kyle Lowry expiring contract. And they said that's not good enough, and they won't tell us, and they're disengaged, right? They won't. Miami came back and said, what's the best offer then? What else do you want us to give you? We're also the only team. Why would we compete and bid against ourselves? So tell us what you actually want. We'll see if we can get there. And Portland's been disengaged, which is super annoying. But anyway, Brian Windhorst also said yesterday that Joe Cronin's also got to realize that, like, this is the market value right now. No one else is putting an offer on there. So Miami's offer, even if it might be low, not to the point where it's Kwame Brown and an unproven Marc Gasol for, for Powell, it's still the best offer on the table because technically it's the only offer on the table, right? So um, what do you think Cronin's doing at this point? Like, what do you think – what is he waiting for? Like, well, I, I think- don't – what do you what's your opinion as a non-miami Heat fan or portland fan well i think there's two things at play here i think what dame and his agent have done unfortunately is and you know fortunately for them is what they've wanted is they haven't really created an, an environment where other teams can really participate or put in an offer so the fact that they've gone out and again why this whole memo got released is because a lot of teams are scared and are not even wanting to get involved because everybody knows that Dame wants to end up in Miami. Um, so with the league doing the memo, I mean, maybe there are some offers. If I, at this point it's too known that Dame doesn't want to play anywhere. So you can't really correct it versus if it was naturally just, he's on the market, you would probably have some other teams involved. Obviously Damian Lillard is amazing and you'd probably have some offers that you could field and leverage and do all that stuff. But because of what's been done already, um, there's nobody at play here besides Miami and Portland. I would say at this point, you can't really fix that. I don't think, you know, the memo coming out today is going to all of a sudden be like, oh, hey, the New York Knicks are interested now in Dame. And, you know, Dame's not going to stay quiet and his agent are going to be OK with it. Like I said, everybody knows the information at hand. But what I do think is that if the Blazers are seeking something specific, I don't understand why they wouldn't communicate that with the Miami Heat and tell them, hey, you know what? Like, yeah, you know, like, I get it. Like, we're not we're not that excited about, uh, you know, Tyler Hero. Um, and, you know, we are excited about you giving us draft picks and maybe, you know, whatever, uh, an expiring contract and maybe a young promising player. Um, but we need you to get a third team involved. And I think ultimately that's where it's going to come into play is – getting a third team involved potentially where maybe Tyler Hero goes there and they get the player that they want in Portland as well as an additional first round pick or two. Yeah. Um, but I think just straight up Miami Heat and Portland, it's it's just it's not enticing enough. Yeah. Totally understand that. Um, it's always been expected a third, fourth team would have to be involved in order to uh, – provide enough assets, but do you think, last question, do you think if, even with Dame saying he would still now at this point because he got reprimanded, I will show up if I get traded anywhere else, and he still desires to go to Miami technically, why do you think other teams haven't put an offer yet? And like, do you think there's any teams out there that could actually put a good offer that is a contender that is actually going to um, – benefit like from being a good fit obviously um from like a salary perspective that can tie in like can you think of any other team out there that has enough assets better assets than miami where it's a combination of expiring young players veterans whatever it may be because i can't i can't i, I think if they I, were written, I, someone came in by now i absolutely think that there are better 
offers out there from other teams. But as a non Miami heat fan, I could tell you that knowing what I know and the information that's out there, I would not want anything to do with Dame because Dame doesn't want anything to do with my team or my city. And so even if they tried to backtrack from that statement, it's not true. It's not honest. It's not what's in his heart. And I don't want anybody coming and playing for my team that doesn't want to be there. And that's exactly what it's going to be. And that's why they're in the situation that they're in. And that's why, like I said, the league needs to figure out how to police this the right way on the front end and not after the fact. Um, and like I said, the way the cards are dealt right now, um, the Blazers and the Heat need to figure this out with incorporating a third or a fourth team to get basically all parties involved, what they want in terms of trade assets. Because you could facilitate this trade via other teams. I mean, I don't know. I'm just like like the Indiana Pacers or something, right? Like, I don't know. I'm just, how many times have we seen Buddy Heald and um, uh, Miles Turner's name pop up in trade offers and stuff like that? And they've just been there. Like, incorporate, you know, I'm just throwing one team as an example. But maybe Miles Turner goes to the Blazers, right? Like, he's a good, solid, young, big, shot blocking, uh, shot making he had a good season last year and maybe hero goes to the Pacers. There's ways to do it. Give a first round pick or whatever it be. So you gotta, you gotta figure out other options, but right now it's just too stagnant. And like I said, the messaging around where we're at and with, with this league memo is not, is not changing anything because it's already known around every league office. Yeah. I don't think there's an issue with the third team. I think like nets are going to be the third team or there's a few other options out there that make sense for, Acquiring Tyler Hero um, for a first round pick, which is a steal. You, I mean, you, you also, the only other part too is that, again, the whole precedent that's been set with like the Rudy Gobert trade, which was like just, I mean, the Timberwolves are such a stupid franchise. It's insane. Um, <laughs> but the, you know, the precedent that got set with that trade, I mean, even, you know, DeJounte Murray got, I think, what was it, three or four first round picks. I mean, that one was pretty excessive too, in my opinion. Um, and then you've got these other trades where everybody's just like, dude, I'm going to trade Damian Lillard. And then the franchise is trying to still maintain a level of uh, respect, right? Like, cause any sure. trade they do, everybody's, everybody from Portland is going to just bad mouth it. So, I mean, the Houston, I can tell you this from a Houston perspective, um, you know, when James Harden put his name in the hat a couple of years ago and when he wanted out, um, we were the whole, the initial trade offer was us landing on getting Ben Simmons from the Sixers. And there was a lot of turmoil in the Houston Rockets fan base in terms of like, you know, he's not good. He's not, he's a, you know, at that point he'd been an all-star and he was still really good defensively. Thank God we didn't bite on that trade. Right. We see what he is now and how he has no motivation to play. Um, but we ended up settling on just draft picks. I mean, we got literally every one of the Nets draft picks. We got four first round, draft picks and then we also got the pick swaps uh on the alternating years and i mean that's not value for james harden those picks basically we've done well with them we got sangoon and uh tari as our you know back end first round picks but it's not like they t they even turned into lottery picks or anything like that but that's the best of what we could get so yeah i think it was worth it now because we all know harden's trash and his career is going down the toilet um but um no to your point the market's gonna reset obviously it's like you're not gonna get the gobert trade especially for a player like gobert um mitchell's trade i think was a little more fair um but here's the common denominator between all those players you mentioned though even harden technically kind of but because that was two years ago when harden got traded or three years ago now uh three yeah. years three years so he was like 30 at that point, right? So um, the common denominator that you meant, didn't mention, though, is that all those players were young. So even Dame, like being considered it as a part of that group, he's 33 years old. He's at the end of his career, essentially. Gobert is still, what, 27, 26, or 28? Like, is, isn't he 28. like... I think he's like 28. Yeah, Mitchell's 26, like... The players that have been traded recently and got those packages, at least they were younger still. Like So naturally, I mean, a player is 33, 34 years old. Even if it was at that same time frame, in theory, 
could have got similar or maybe less. I don't think he was going to get much more um, because of his, I mean, he's obviously better out of all those players. I would want Damian Lillard, but those players are still like at least in their twenties. Um, and a big issue, I think too, with why other teams are not coming in for Dame, which I've brought up, other people have brought up. And then Woj finally brought up um, is his age and the contract too. Like, Sure, there's other teams that could probably put a better offer out there if Dame said I'm open to like okay a few teams, but not many teams want to trade for a guy that one doesn't want to go there. To your point, but also he's 33, dude. Like the older you get, the more injury prone you are, just naturally. And also his last two years, he's going to make 57 million and 60 something million at age 36 and 37. Like his game might age better than other players, but like who knows like Chris Paul's like an anomaly, but like he's been injured like every season for the last like four years since he's been age 34. Right. Same as Dame. He's been good. He's been an anomaly where he's been like pretty damn good for like a 36, 37 year old point guard, but he's just getting hurt every single year. So Dame could be the the same, even if he does sustain and last as one of those like point guards, like look at Darren Williams, Jesus Christ outside of injuries and stuff like that guy was out of the league like eight years ago. And remember the debate between him and Chris Paul, like he didn't have the longevity. Chris Paul did not. Everybody has that, that trajectory and that career length, the average like NBA career is like seven, eight years, right? Maybe less, maybe like six years. So yeah, but that's why I don't think other teams are coming in the woodwork outside of Dame saying only Miami because he did in the memo say, yes, sure. I will report. I have to say that because I'll get fined. But and what the fines are such bullshit, dude. To your point, it's like such a tap on the wrist, like 150,000 up to 150k. You know what she's making next year? It's like a uh, half that's like like one quarter of basketball for him. How'd you know that? I was guessing you're so handsome and smart. So, there's a Miami Heat podcast that I follow that I love, and they basically broke it down. He makes like 44 million per year, or not per year, but next year. 82 games, yada, yada, yada. It's like each game he makes like half a million dollars. Isn't that insane? So it's like based on that, it's like one quarter essentially. Yeah. So can can I, I just want to piggyback one thing off what you just said too, is that like context matters, right? And what I mean by that is the Miami Heat are very close to an NBA title. They are in that tier. And for a team like Miami, the back end of that contract of what they might get paid and what he might be as a player at that point in his career, it'll all be irrelevant yep. if, if they win the title. And my examples there are Anthony Davis goes to the Lakers. They got their title, dude. Nobody should complain. Nobody cares. The Raptors trade for Kawhi yeah. Leonard, Kawhi mm-hmm. Leonard for one season. They got their title. Nobody cares that he left. All that matters is if you win the championship, even if you're paying them in years three, four, and five, some outrageous amount, reflect back on your championship, and that's what matters. Yeah, him and Jimmy are going to be 38 and 37, I think. By Or Jimmy has three more years. So I think Dame is actually, in his last year, will be 36. Jimmy will be 37. So that could be a very ugly final year. <laughs> um or it could be beautiful because it doesn't matter because they won a championship. And also, Dame's game could age very well because he is not the most athletic dude. Like, he's pretty athletic, but he's not like a Russell Westbrook, John Morant, Derrick Rose type athletic. And he's his, he could shoot from half court. Like, he's so wet. Like, he could still shoot. Um, and then Jimmy Butler, yeah, I don't know if he's going to age as gracefully because, you know, he's pounding the ball. Um, or not pounding the ball, but just like he's getting pounded down low. Like he plays in the in the mid post and attacks the rim all the time and always gets knocked down to the ground. Um, but he has a pretty good, decent mid-range jumper that he can work on, right? Like he has that good in-between game. So he needs to get that old man mid-range, you know, Adonis Haslam kind of like baseline jumper um, to prolong his career too. But Jimmy and him have two solid, I would say, years left, you know, as contenders, as superstars in the twilight of their prime. And then Dame, Dame, God, I got to go to bed, dude. Uh, Bam, then can be the young anchor, right? Like with those two older 
uh, aging stars. So can, can I, can I ask you one question before we finish? Yeah. Would you as a Miami heat fan be willing to give up bam? No, it, wait, wait, but hold on. But not bam. Not, I'm not saying bam for Dame. I'm saying if you were able to give up bam, but get like a Dame and another like miles Turner type player back. No. Okay. If it's like, as part of like a three team trade, you mean like trade Tyler and Bam and then get Dame? Uh, no, because those three are such a perfect fit. Like Bam's point guards that he's played with in his career are like Goran Dragic, who's not the best playmaker. He was always a better scorer. Um, Kyle Lowry in the twilight of his career. Gabe Vincent undrafted. Um, so he hasn't had a real type of point guard. And I mean, Dame's not a real type of point guard, but he's a better playmaker than all of those folks that I mentioned, right? Like he's a player that's capable of averaging eight assists per game. He has so much gravity that he drives draws compared to a Kyle Lowry, even in his prime, he's going to get blitzed so much. Right. And so he's a good passer, better passer than Jimmy Butler is. um, Even when he was getting blitzed the last few seasons, um, and so he's going to be able to put Bam in his spots. It's like when Chris Paul came to play for the Rockets with Capella, like activating Capella. It's like when Chris Paul went anywhere, basically, or like a Rajon Rondo in a sense. He's not the same. I don't want to compare Dame to those types of guys, but like in comparison to any point guard that Bam has ever had, they've never really put him in the right spots. And so I think Dame is a better passer than all those folks, and he's going to get blitzed so damn hard. He's going to definitely help, and he's going to be a better lob threat, I think, as well. Um, and then he's going to help open up the floor for Jimmy Butler as well. So I think I want to keep Bam in that scenario because of his defensive capability as well. He's like one of the best two-way players in the NBA. Um, there's no one really, honestly, that I think we would get in return that would be worth it unless it's like another all-star caliber type player like miles turner in my opinion is not so it would need to be someone that's like close that's young or like a former all-star themselves and i don't mean like former as in past their prime like someone who's been an all-star but like they're not as good and they can't be a perennial all-star i don't know like a Sabonis type, maybe even like, I mean, Sabonis is really good, but, and I don't think you'd be able to get him and a Dame. It would, it would have to be someone below like a Sabonis kind of guy. Right. That's also like, I would say 30 or younger. I wouldn't want anybody much older, but yep. That's my thoughts. I love Bam. So, but anyway, it is getting way too late. It's almost my bedtime. Uh, Thank you so much for hopping on. Um, as we said, we're going to do 15 minutes today and I'm looking up at the top and it says 38. So we were right on, right on time, uh, (laughs) per usual. And it's just so funny because like in my head, I'm like, okay, we're going to stop. We're going to stop. And then like, and I don't want to cut you off because you're just like in rhythm and flow. And so I see how excited and happy you get. So I just keep it going. So here's another 15 minute podcast for you guys. Um, (laughs) (laughs) but anyway, thanks again, guys. Uh, don't forget to like comment and subscribe and let me know what you guys think um about the day memo in the comments thanks guys bye jesus